All right, so back to this back to back videos, uh, miraculous videos uploaded, right? Um, I, I talked about in the previous video, right? The uh, London special thoughts and opinions video that I'd likely be make, making in um, update season six predictions video, right? I don't recall if I made an, an actual tangible one or if I just kind of tailored it to the season five finale thoughts and opinions video right again who knows regardless I i'm making this video now um and specifically like i just watched the uh, actual season six trailer and teaser and, and i'll i'll talk about that first before i talk about kind of what i think we're gonna get out of it um coming out of uh i, I think the bigger thing is the london special but but i'll talk about the Trailer teaser. So I think probably the the most interesting thing we get out of that like teaser trailer is the change in the um, art style, right? Like it's completely different, you know, from how it has been. And I'm gonna say I'm honestly indifferent. Like, like some people have been like hating on it, and some people have been loving it. But like I will say, it, it looks more like the movie. You know, which is the main thing I noticed and point out, right? It looks more like the movie, but, like, again, like, some people have been saying, like, it's ass, it's horrible. Some people have been liking it. I'm indifferent because at the end of the day, and this is why I said, you know, season two is one of my favorite seasons. And it has, like, by far the worst animation. Like, actually, like, one of my favorite episodes, Dark Owl, has literally, like, the worst fucking animation it's horrible like it's bad like it's go go rewatch dark owl the like hawk moth scenes are just like literally like garbage like the 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 quality of that is just n like actually like terrible like i can't emphasize enough how bad it is but it's still one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite um seasons right before kind of it all i don't want to say went wrong but that you know i, I like season two right probably one of my favorites um but again, so I, I don't really care as much about the art style, right? But it, it is an interesting and it is um, – I think the change is refreshing, honestly, because it is like – also, again, supposedly the Tokyo special is in 2D, but that's just going to make it like the uh, PV, you know. But again, besides the point, I, I think more than anything, the art style change is refreshing. I, I look forward to it, right? Again, I, I don't really care if it's like people see it as good or bad, right? But I do think it is. It is a nice change given that like – the show is relatively maintained the same art style the whole time. So in an update, you know, if, if they're able to like actually make it work out is, uh, I, I think can be a good thing and is, uh, welcome there. Right. But again, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm, I'm indifferent. Right. So that, but that's just something I wanted to touch on and address. Right. Cause now can kind of go into what I wanted to talk about and, and sort of, the i guess almost predictions but like you know more so i guess what i anticipate or look for coming out of the london special because i think that does like obviously that's more like story and what we're gonna see you know is coming out of the plot for season six because again i said coming out of season this is i talked about this during the london special coming out of season five you know i wasn't particularly looking forward to season six but after the london special i'm like, I'm on board. I'm looking forward to it, right? Like, I think the London special is really good. Like, debatably better than the Paris one. So, you know, seeing that there, right? Like, I'm I'm genuinely looking forward to it. Because, again, you know, the Paris special, obviously, you know, was the whole multiversal, you know, uh, thing. But, again, the London special coming out of season uh, five, like, the events immediately following in the aftermath. Right, saying the stage for the new Hawk Moth and stuff, and then saying the stage for season six overall, did a very good job. So, with that, I think let's kind of get into it. So, I think probably, I think by far the most interest. I mean, we we can look at story, right? I mean, we know it's going to be Ladybug, Cat Noir, all of the other superheroes possessing their own miraculous. You know, so no more of the Guardian thing, which is good given i mean shadow moth like is a prime example as to why that doesn't work right i mean yeah freaking uh you know or shadow moth strikes back right this season four finale i mean having all of them in one place not a great idea right so you know again distributing them all out especially to people who we know of on them like i mean no brainer right and then also we know lila's the new hawk moth right uh she literally won right it took them time traveling to stop her 
And seemingly, based off of that trailer, she's going to kind of settle more into the traditional Hawk Moth role where she akumatizes others rather than herself. And potentially, I think the big sort of interesting part or question is, are we going to see the time tag or episode from the present, right? You know, is it going to come full circle where we see Lila akumatize uh, the individual? I, I don't remember who it was. It was... um. It was Alia's, like, cousin or brother. You know, I'm pretty sure it was her cousin that was the one who got akumatized and became Time Tagger. So I think that's probably one of the biggest questions. Are we going to see Time Tagger? But regardless, she's going to kind of fall into that more traditional Hawk Moth role, right? I mean, obviously still more clever than Gabriel, right? You know, um, but especially because, like, I mean... Part of the reason why Gabriel's character was the way it was is season one. Like, season one, like, had no progression at all. Hawkmoth was just the same, like, through 25 episodes. And then making him Gabriel, you know, they, they couldn't go, like, the Lila route where she's just immediately, like, extremely competent and literally, like, wins right off the bat. And they have to go back in time and stop that. But again, you know, but besides the point. Right. So but I think story wise, it's going to be kind of straightforward where it's like, all right, you know, you just have they'll probably call upon whatever or just who, whatever heroes are available. We, you know, we'll fight the akumatized victims as they come. One thing I talked about that was interesting is if it was more than just one akumatization uh, or if it was more than one episode per akumatization. So what I talked about is and this was kind of one thing I talked about that makes series better overall you get like an akumatized villain that like lasts or like has a span of like a couple or a few episodes. Like I think that, and especially with Lila, you know, and how clever she is, I think that's a definitely a greater possibility. But overall, it's still gonna, I think, look pretty similar to what we've seen, right? I, I think 100% the more interesting thing is obviously, and this is kind of what I, I talked about, you know, coming out of... Um, the London special, the fallout of season five and the finale, right? So I think 100% the more interesting thing and in what they'll, my guess is that they'll focus more on is kind of the like non-superhero aspect, like the, the, the character aspect, right? And kind of the, um, what's the term, you know, the sort of more the plot side of things, right? Where it's like, you know, the, those like character, those crucial specific key character interactions and kind of like, Again, a, a lot more on the non-superhero aspect, right? So, I guess more like the soft aspect of, you know, the show, right? Where it's like, you know, again, like all, all those like characters and personality stuff like that. So, like, especially like, because let, let's look like this way. So, coming out of the season five finale in the London special, right? We have the tangible effects of the wish. We got answers to the wish, right? So, what the wish did, the... Only thing that the wish did, we because this was a big question. The only thing that the wish did was trade Gabriel's life for Natalie's. That was it, right? So nothing else came out of the wish, which again is that was one of the biggest questions we had coming out of the season five finale because I thought, like, oh, logically, everyone's knowledge. Um, should be a race. Natalie was never ill, you know, uh, certain things like never happened. The miraculous were repaired, right? Yada, yada, yada. Again, that didn't happen. The only tangible effect to come out of it was Gabriel training his life for Natalie's, right? So, you know, Emily still passed, right? Gabriel is now reunited with Emily in the afterlife. Uh, unfortunately, Gabriel's burning in hell. I hate, I hate saying, it, but you know, um, Natalie is healthy though, right? Um, and Marinette somehow is going to repair the miraculous. Who the fuck knows how? It just is going to happen at some point, you know? So I, I presume the wish fixed the miraculous, but I guess, you know, who knows, right? But again, she repaired it, so it is what it is. Um, and then again, obviously, a lot of those character act interactions. We saw Marinette's decision to. I think probably the biggest the, the biggest one in what we'll see is Marinette's decision to, um, again, you know, to, I guess, technically cover up the truth, right? Her decision to spin it, you know, it, it's like the whole, like, this is an old example, you know, but like Ben Kenobi fucking, you know, Darth Vader, like Anakin, like, it's like that type, right? You know, so, again... 
right? But yeah, the main thing there in, in the main tangible thing to come out of that was it, again, you know, how, especially because my presumption is that like the wish occurred, like Gabriel snapped his fingers, you know, died. He was repaired by, you know, uh, Natalie came back, you know, all of a sudden everyone like, you know, thinks Gabriel died a hero, you know, but again, given that we know it's a lot, a lot less happened, we know there was a lot more kind of man manipulation, like soft, you know, I guess plays being made, right? Really just, um, so again, it, it really basically it all fell on Marinette as Ladybug covering for Gabriel, right? With again, few, like with a few people knowing the truth, obviously Marinette, Natalie and Kagami know the truth. It's questionable whether Alia does or like the other monk, but definitely, you know, there are three individuals who know the truth and it's the three that I listed off, right? And again, you know, not going to debate whether that was the right decision, right? I mean, I feel like that's pointless, right? But again, that is one of the main tangible things, right? Is that her decision to cover up, you know, to portray Gabriel as a hero rather than admit he was... A monarch. So I talked about how, you know, Adrian took the news and then I talked about how there is potential for conflict given Marinette as Ladybug may tell something to Chat Noir that Adrian isn't supposed to know, right? Not knowing that Chat Noir is, is Adrian. Granted, I will say she did say at the end of the London special that she couldn't tell Chat Noir, you know, what she wanted to, right? And Chat Noir said, like, regardless, you made the right decision. I have no doubt about it. Or something along those lines. So maybe that won't happen, but I do feel as though the potential is there, right? And then also, I think, again, I, I just really want to bring up, like, the conversation between Marinette and Natalie, right? You know, because I don't think Kagami will really have issue with holding on to the truth like that. Because, again, specifically because her mother was, again, you know, an accomplice. And, you know, right at the end of the day... Um, I guess she's kind of more concerned about her, right? And as well as Adrian's well-being, right? You know, so she, she's willing to hold on to that for there, right? Like, again, but I think Marinette and then Natalie, like, their, their conversation, not only immediately, like, following. Because, yeah, literally the first thing that happened after the wish was Marinette's like, what the fuck happened? Like, and then the, the Kwamis were like, oh, yeah, you know, Gabriel sacrificed himself for Natalie. And then she was just there and she's like, wait, he actually did that? And then their, their conversation, right? And then especially, again, the fact that I'm, I'm talking about this, you know, Natalie's wanting, uh, originally her wanting Marinette to tell the truth, right? You know, and then Marinette saying, like, I, I cannot do that. Like, Adrian, like, you'll go to jail, like, and Adrian needs a mother, right? And then Natalie's, like, apprehensiveness to accept that role, given, again, everything Gabriel did for uh, um, the melee, right? You know, but... I think that's stuff that's going to be really, I think that's going to be the focus of season six, right? Like this is going to be kind of like, I'm, at, I'm, I'm guarantee I'm going to say this and it's going to be completely wrong. I don't think season six is going to focus as much on like the sort of like action, the akumatization fight, especially because Lila was stopped, right? You know, in the London special, right? I think it's going to focus a lot more on like, all right, you know, how are they going to set up character relations? How are they going to set up you know, um, it, it set up the, the other superheroes, right? And characters that way, you know, coming out of, um, the season five finale and the London special given again, you know, cause like, I wouldn't be surprised if each character, like who holds a miraculous, especially since they now do permanently kind of get their own episode. Like, I, I honestly would not be surprised if that's how they did it. Right. Because to be fair, that's kind of how they did it for season five. Once, um, again, with, you know, Monarch, Gabriel having all the miraculous, right? You know, but I, I would not be surprised in this life if, that, if that's kind of how they... What about season six where it's like, all right, each person gets their, like, own episode. And then again, the focus is a lot more on them, right? Because, I mean, you still have players like, you know, Felix is still out there, you know. And obviously he has the peacock, but I guess, you know, he's, he's kind of a good person now, right? Supposedly. Um, also, I, I think in, so. Marinette has the two rings for um, Felix and Adrian, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, so again, and because we saw Adrian in the London special, kind of like they do the finger rub, right? The aggressed finger rub, you know. So she kind of has the 
amongst four um, uh, Adrian and Felix, right? As well as her knowing the truth again about, you know, Adrian and Felix as well. So, I, I, again, I, I just think overall that's going to really be the focus. And I think probably the most interesting character I, I think is Natalie, honestly. Like, she's also my favorite, so I'm biased. But I'm kind of curious how her character is going to play an impact, right? Because, one, she's really the only caretaker that Adrian has left, right? So she's going to kind of, you know, be that role, right? You know, that, that mother figure that he so needs, right? And then, again, especially because even by season five, like, after Gabriel just didn't reset everything by going back in time, she just became antagonistic towards him, right? So, you know, again, she wasn't ride or die till the end. She turned on him, right? You know, which is something that she even said, like, I'm not like Gabriel to Marinette. But also conceding that Marinette was able to rekindle whatever good he had left in him. So, but re really, again, you know, the... So, besides, again, taking care of Adrian, I also think, again, because she knows the truth, right? And she w originally wanted the truth to be made public, right? And it was, again... Marinette, who said, like, no, like, he needs that mother figure, right? So the, the, we're, we'll see kind of the dilemma there. As well as, again, the fact that she was traditionally an enemy of, you know, Liebling and Ket Noir, right? Fighting them, right? As Mayora. And then her now, and also, like, with all the knowledge she has as one of the three individuals who is aware of the truth of events, right? Again, Marinette, her, and then Kagami. Right, so and not even Kagami really knows the whole picture because I don't know if Kagami is aware of. She's aware of obviously Gabriel's monarch, and then her mother is an accomplice. But she, I don't think, was aware of Natalie. I don't think was aware of like any like more specifics. Right, really, it's Marinette and Natalie who know the full truth. Right, because even Lila, she's not aware of the full truth because she got duped again in post during the special right so she doesn't even know that Marinette's ladybug right you know much less I mean she knows that Gabriel's monarch right but like she doesn't know that much more uh beyond that right but again you know it's like so I think Natalie is really kind of a big kind of the big wild card in season six like what are they because I feel like again I, I feel like they'll probably go in episode per miraculous holder kind of flush out their characters now that they're permanent holders Granted, I say this, and it could be the exact opposite. But I think Natalie, again, she'll be, be the big wild card, right? As to kind of, all right, what are they going to do with her character now? Um, and then, obviously, like, Lila's Hawkmoth, again, I think she's going to take a more um, kind of traditional, like, standard, you know, she'll be accumulatizing others. But I wouldn't be surprised if they drag them out across multiple episodes and kind of give them a bit more depth, but also so that they can focus more on these other character you know, aspects that I brought up, right? But I think I'm, I'm kind of, I've said my piece, I've said what I want to, I'm probably gonna end it here. Um, again, it's like, just, w we'll see there, right? Don't, don't know, don't know much else to say there, right? Um, again, it's like, I just think, honestly, I'm, this might be me just glazing at at this one, because she's my favorite character, but I'm very curious as to how, like, even more than like any other season before, because like, I'd say prior seasons were a lot more focused on like story, like, all right, where's the story going at this point? I think this is one of the seasons that is going to flesh out the characters a lot more, right? Go motives, intentions, um, again, a lot of that stuff. And then probably, God forbid, we look at season seven or eight. Then they'll work up on like, all right, how, is, uh, how are they going to conclude? I mean, because I don't even know once they beat Lila, who even would like take. Because it seems like the, the role of Hawkmoth or like the mantle of Hawkmoth is a transitioning, you know, uh, mantle, right? So I have no idea who would possibly take it over after her, but who the fuck knows? Chloe, actually, that's a really good. I have no idea what the fuck's gonna happen to Chloe. She seemingly she's just literally not part of the show anymore. But again, granted, it's like it's it's just whatever. Like she she's basically done at this point, right? Like I feel like that was kind of the whole flight back to the U.S., right? I mean, they can bring U.S. or like international heroes or community back into it, but it's like. I don't think that'd really be the case or the focus, right? That would be kind of like a finale thing where it's like the season five finale, all of a sudden, literally everyone's involved because it's the end of the world, right? But again, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But with that, I don't really have much else to say for this one. So, yeah. So for this one, see you in the next one.